when it comes to fans, it is a fan's right mm -hmm. to have whatever opinion they want to have. And people are going to be upset because, especially when it, you're talking about books or games, because you're never going to be the exact person who they had in their head or who they played on Witcher 3, for example. I don't necessarily consider that toxic. I just consider that passionate. Mm. And it's something which I have obviously had to come to terms with over the years. That you're totally impossible and out of control with some sort of drug problem and a fixation on what you consider Rick von Sloniker's wickedness. You're a snob, a sexist, totally obnoxious and tiresome, and lately you've gotten just weird. Why should we believe anything you say? Uh, hi, this is Christopher Walken, and you're watching Jason King on Kung Fu Hot Dog. Wow! Can I punch him in the face, please? And now, ladies and gentlemen, a race relations video, yet another from yours truly, because I like to do these sort of things from time to time. And of course, it's been raining in the UK today. I went out to do some much needed laundry and came back looking like a shaggy dog. So when you chicks have to blow dry your hair coming in from the rain, I kind of understand where you're coming from. But here we are again with another article from Bounding Into Comics. And it's a doozy, folks. It's going to be probably a bit of a spicy video. Maybe not too much, but uh, it's something that kind of winds me up a lot of the time. So we all know that back in 2020, a horrible thing happened before the very world. Uh, before the very world's eyes where Derek Chauvin decided to be the biggest prick on earth. And I'm not going to go into that. You Google the name, you know what comes up. But since that incident, since that event, rather, it's more of an event than an incident it's kind of blown out of proportion in Hollywood and it's the general feeling of everybody at the time now when that all kicked off uh, there were BLM riots and protests let's say the riots were in, in America and the protests were in the UK as well and other parts of the world but when the stuff started happening in the UK I just thought, what is this all about? I, I, I don't believe in the BLM or whatever it stands for. But you know, clearly there are people out there who just wanted to go and showboat, get hit to social media posts, pretend they're part of the bigger cause, and really they weren't. And of course, one of those people that thinks they're part of the cause is Jar Jar Abrams because that man loves to wreck everything. He's the destroyer of franchises. He's Unicron from Transformers, the planet muncher. Nom, 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 nom. In his case, he's the IP muncher. Everything he touches turns to shit. Quoting a phrase from Uncharted 2, by the way. So the whole point about this uh, video today is about a year ago, uh, there was an announcement from Jar Jar that he's bringing to you a black Superman. It would have been fine, except for the fact that he's race swapping Clark Kent. Now, the argument can be that when Clark Kent came to Earth, he could assume any form, any race that he wanted to, but he chose to be the de facto white man. That was it, plain and simple. In line with the vision of Joe Schuster and Jerry Siegel, the two white Jewish immigrants who gave us Superman. I did make a very cringy video back then. I've since deleted it because I thought at the time, if I was all kitsy wootsy and it was in favor of this political ideology going forward, people would flock to my video and be favorable and subscribe in the masses. They didn't. In fact, uh, when I produced other videos later on, especially my Candyman review, uh, there were some people, and I believe there are people of color who called me out and said, you should have been a lot more brutal with your review because clearly that film was woke as hell. Like, and I, and I knew it, I just didn't want to say it. So here I am slagging off this piece now because it deserves to be slagged off. So Jar Jar Abrams hired Tanahisi Coates to pen a black Superman movie. Ta-Nehisi Coates is a piece of shit, by the way. And for further proof of that, if you go to this article here from Politico.com, uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates was, oh, he really hated 9-11. He did. In fact, to quote here, this is about the firemen, or basically the fire services and law enforcement uh, who went in to rescue people. Uh, they were not human to me, black, white, whatever. They were menaces of nature. They were the fire, the comet, the storm, which could, with no justification, shatter my body. Now, I don't know what he means by the last few moments of that pretentious statement there, 
But the beginning of it, you know this guy hates the fire services, uh, law enforcement. He just hates their guts. For whatever reason, I don't know. But apparently this uh, attracted a lot of attention, good and bad. And uh, this guy also, <laughs> he annihilated Captain America for the Marvel comics. And this guy, he's just a grifter. He's a, he just takes the... Uh, uh, the money that's given to him and doesn't produce the goods. Uh, to prove that point as well, if you we go back to this article here, uh, <laughs> they do say now, now the scooper of geekosity, uh, Mike Sutton, says that this project of the Black Superman, which by the way, didn't even have a title. Okay, it's in cold turkey. I'm really glad to hear that because uh, the longer this project stays in the ground, buried, the less likely we are to even see its resurface and do anything because it's a massive virtue signal. And in fact, when you talk about massive virtue signals, you remember the whole thing, the black and white motif where you had people like Sarah Paulson and uh, Aaron Paul just saying, I take responsibility. I take responsibility. Why? Why are you taking responsibility for? Up until the Derek Chauvin incident, um, race relations in Hollywood in terms of film and diversity was fine. We saw a lot more of it. It wasn't in your face. Everything was done to our satisfaction. But then I was obviously this event sent everybody into overdrive. Now you can't turn on adverts on YouTube without seeing copious amounts of diversity. It's almost to the point where the, the, the monkey can no longer wind the wrench forward and all we have is just chud coming out. Lots of chud, nothing else. So look, you had Christopher Reeve, you had Brandon Routh, and then you have obviously Henry Cavill, who, as far as I'm concerned, has not hung up the red cape. No, 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 no. Other people say he has given up Superman. He has not given up Superman. That man is ready to don the cape again. And I think if he does, do it for Matthew Vaughan, because Matthew Vaughan understands superheroes. He understands structuring stories and action in a way that is so satisfying. If you've seen things like the Kingsman trilogy, you've seen Kick-Ass, you know what this guy can do. I think Matt, Matthew Vaughan is fantastic. But when he tell Warner Brothers this, when he let them know, they just got deaf ears. They just want to do their own little thing. They want to be over ambitious. In fact, what's so hilarious about this article here is that they, <laughs> is that after a year, Tanahisi Coates hasn't even produced like an iteration of a great screenplay. They want to make it Oscar worthy. Well, you cannot make something Oscar worthy until it becomes a film when it's in the can. When we see a trailer, when we go and see the film, then we can decide or the, Econ the, the Academy can decide whether it's Oscar worthy or not. When Todd Phillips made the Joker, do you think in his mind he thought it was going to win an Oscar? Of course he didn't. He just wanted to make an Elseworld movie that was so far removed from what DC had given us before. You know, the bright colors, the cutesy wootsy dialogue. I mean, Aquaman is such a crap movie when I think about it now. But then I watched it a couple of times the cinema i thought it was great when i think about it now i'm too embarrassed to watch it and now when it comes to henry cavill as superman you got joss whedon's cut then you got Zack snyder's version and i think in the joss whedon version there is a bit more of superman on screen and he's a bit less in the snyder version which is a shame i and i love man of steel and i get what snyder was going for but really you need someone who actually understands what Superman is all about. And I think Matthew Vaughan is the guy who could do that. And I think he's pretty much there. But yeah, Ta-Nehisi Coast, I think they gave him a lot of money, like a big advance, and he's not been able to come off uh, with anything that's been to their satisfaction. I'm hoping people at like Warner Brothers and Jar Jar Abrams, who's, who was given, what, 500 million to work with Warner Brothers, can look and, and think to themselves, hey, you know what? This might not be such a great idea. And I've seen YouTube, now I've seen uh, black uh, YouTube influencers like Tyrone Magnus, Say what you like about the guy, but when he did a reaction video to Black Superman, he's not in favor of it. He wants to see Henry Cavill. And I like that. I like that people can be honest and say, we want to see Henry Cavill. In fact, the people that Jar Jar and co want to pander to don't want this. They do not want a Black Clark Kent. They want Henry Cavill to reprise his role. That's what they want. And Clark Kent, I'm sorry, he's always been white. 
He's been like that for 80 years plus since his inception in 1938 on that front cover of Action Comics. So don't tell me, oh, well, Jason, well, it's about time they gave us a different Superman or color. You can have Val Zod. You can have Calvin Ellis. You can have them in a in the same Superman film as Superman, maybe, or have them in a completely different Superman film where it's an alternate universe. You could do that, no problem. No one will have an issue with that at all. Whether people will go and watch it is the next thing. So that's the thing. You can have all these great ideas. Will people go and watch it? It's like Morbius. You introduce Morbius out of the blue. Nobody knows who he is unless you're a real hardcore comics person. And if you don't know who he is, why do you want to go and watch him? Uh, uh, but it's so funny here that uh, they have a, they're supposed to have a draft ready by now, um, but Coates hasn't delivered on his promises. Again, he's taken that advance money, shoved some of it up his ass and probably sniffed coke and hired hookers in the meantime. Which does remind me, there's a funny YouTuber online who uh, mentioned that because he used to work in Hollywood as an executive producer, how uh, they like producers and directors would hire specific trailers to go and sniff cocaine and other assorted drugs inside of them so it would not surprise me that Tanahisi Coates would even uh, not consider doing that uh, and this is all virtue signaling I mean a Superman who becomes the president of the USA you know who my favorite black president of the USA was David Palmer 24 when we saw that guy in 2001 2002 nobody rolled their eyes and went oh god they're giving us a black president it was like, wow, this is actually a pretty cool move. Never seen this before. And when you got an actor as great as Dennis Haysbert in the role, of course, you're not going to have any issues whatsoever. Now, to me, that wasn't that role wasn't a virtue signal. It was like, we just want to give you something different. And that's from Fox Television. So go figure. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is Black Panther, because I figure this is part of the conversation too, even though it's a Marvel property. So this is from time.com. Yes, Time Magazine. And uh, this journalist, Jamil Smith, obviously a freelancer, talks about how his life was changed in 1980 when he saw Billy D. Williams as Landau Calrissian, a character who represented him. And he goes into a bit of diatribe in this article about how it's hard for us to see ourselves represented. So he chose to ignore the 70s black action heroes in the form of Fred Williamson and Jim Brown. Williamson had a stipulation in his contract that he was going to be a big, bad, black mofo on screen get the ladies kick the dudes in but he will never die at the end of the picture which i thought was a very smart move from mr williamson himself so he chose to ignore those characters but apparently billy d williams as lando calrissian really made an impact on him and nowhere in this article does he mention blade from 1998 for me that's a landmark in terms of a black Marvel superhero and Marvel actually did their best to make sure Blade was never acknowledged. You know who did acknowledge Blade as being the successor or the precursor to the MCU? Chris Evans, the real Captain America by the way ladies and gentlemen. He walked up to Snipes at a party, shook his hand and said if it wasn't for you and your Blade films we would not have an MCU as we do today and he's absolutely correct. Well let's not talk about today's MCU because it's a diabolical mess right now. And I, and I tell you what, we all saw it coming. We all saw the bubble about to burst. So this Black Superman project from Tanahisi Coates and Jar Jar Abrahams, please don't happen. Please stay buried in the ground. We don't want to see you. We don't want to see you see the light of day. It's not going to happen. And that's pretty much it. So if you enjoyed my little rant today, folks, you know what to do already. Leave a like below, slap that subscribe button. And if I were you, I'll check me out on my next video. Are there, an, are there any other superheroes that you'd love to bring to the big screen? Um, I think Spider-Man could do with a bit of help. Mm. Um, I think there's, there's some fun stuff that could happen with Spider-Man. Um, Always wanted to make a Superman film, and my Superman movie would be incredibly different to the Superman film that's out there. But um, how so? I'd do the more colourful Dick Donner. It's Superman. He's wearing his underwear outside his pants. You know. You know what I mean? <laughs> so um, I'd, ha I'd have. I'd have. I'd. I'd do more the Superman that I grew up on and loved. Like and subscribe, or get your nuts Krogan crushed with Jason King.